Hey there movie fans, uh, welcome to the Blues of October. Now before I'm going to show you my new blues, I'd like to say a few things about Paranormal Activity Tokyo Night. Now you might remember this from my previous update, and I said that the final 15-20 minutes were a lot scarier than the, um, the three American movies combined. Um, I have to take those words back. Um, I've seen it the second time. And it isn't as scary anymore as the first time that I saw it. Uh, you know, my opinion on this movie has changed. Not very much, but... Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's, it's that good or scary uh, anymore, to be honest with you. Um, I also realized when I saw this, you know, when I was watching this for the second time, I realized how much this movie looks like the first movie uh, I, I realized that you know the first time when I was watching it but I didn't really pay much attention to it but uh, to give you an, an example um, and this is going to be a spoiler alert in the first movie the girl uh, gets bitten by the you know by the demon uh, by the you know the invisible entity or whatever it is and this you know thing kind of possessed her body um, through that bite and the same thing happens with this girl as well and there's some other similarities between this one and the first movie and um, yeah the, the, the reason why I'm telling you guys this is because I, I, I did not want to mislead you guys you know it's when I was talking about this in my September update it sounded like this is the you know, th this was the best paranormal activity movie of all time. That's not the case. I mean, personally, I would prefer part one and part two over this one. But I would still recommend it. Um, you know, if, if you've seen the American paranormal activity movies and you like them and you have the chance to see this one, then go ahead and see it. Uh, just don't expect too much of it, really. But... Um, yeah, that's all. That's all I want to say. Anyway, um, let's take a look at my, you know, the, at the Blu-ray purchases that I got over the month of October, and uh, you probably have noticed already is the Blu-ray box set of all of the James Bond movies. Um, well, except Skyfall, of course. Uh, I haven't seen Skyfall yet, but. Uh, Hopefully, I will do that sometime next week. And um, it's a very nice um, box set over here. I'm sure you guys have seen this many times, so I'm going to give you a quick look on the, uh, on the inside here. You know, I, I really hate these kind of packages. I know there's not really a big problem for the Blu-rays, because the Blu-rays has um, an extra protective um, coating you know they don't they don't get damaged that easily but um, still they are pretty difficult to get these discs out of that package and uh, yeah not a fan of this at all but anyway it's it's a nice it's a nice um, addition nonetheless my favorite Bond movies would be um, from Russia with Love. Really like that one. Goldfinger's pretty good. On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Um, you know, in my opinion, that is the most underrated Bond movie. It is the only Bond w movie with uh, George Lazenby, and um, it also has the most darkest ending in any um, Bond movie, if you ask me. Uh, the man with the golden gun really liked that one, and uh, Golden Eye is a, is an absolute favorite of mine. Casino Royale, of course, and you know a few others. And uh, 
yeah, very happy to have this. And I'm very much looking forward to Skyfall. Next up is the Universal Monsters, the Essential Collection. This is for the um, carbon shaped box set from the UK, which is, I believe, this is out of print now. Quick look inside. There's the box set. There has some art cards in it and some and a booklet in there as well. You can see a picture of it over here. I've always been a big, big fan of these kind of films. You know, Dracula, Frankenstein, they're all fantastic films. My favorite, I mean, I, I love all of them, but my absolute favorite would be The Bride of Frankenstein. I mean, I, I love the original Frankenstein as well, but The Bride of Frankenstein is a very superior um, sequel. And my least favorite would be the only color movie and that is um phantom of the opera even you know i still enjoy it i still like it very much but of all of the other titles that would be my least favorite and you know it's something there's something i like to say about the uh, dracula blu-ray um this movie or this blu-ray has two versions you have the bela lugosi version of course and you have the spanish version and both versions were made um you know during the same time they made the billy ghosty version at daytime and at night they made the um spanish version on the same set and when you look at the um the picture quality of both these versions the spanish version looks so much better than the uh, lugosi version i mean if you have to set then you know go check it out yourself and you know, i cannot believe how how perfect these panels version looks like and it, it's 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 actually unbelievable that it was made around the same time because the Baylor Lugosi version looks much much older than the Spanish version but a great set beautiful set And of course, I also have the Indiana Jones uh, Blu-ray box set, also from the UK. Um, now this is certainly one of my favorite uh, Blu-ray releases. Got all these cool things in here. I don't think I have to show you the inside. I'm sure there's uh, there are some videos out there that you probably have already seen. Uh, I know that Shaq Red 65 did a video on this. Um, yeah, great set, wonderful, wonderful set. Very happy to have this. Okay, the next one is another Steven Spielberg uh, movie, and that is E.T. the Extraterrestrial. This is of course the uh, Digi book. Uh, this is from um, yeah, this is the Dutch uh, edition. Which is a lot thicker than the American um, Digibook. Uh, same thing with the with the Jaws Digibook. There's a look at the back. I have the iconic um, picture there, you know, with uh, Elliot and AT and the bike. The Blu-ray and the DVD. Some pictures here. I'm just gonna get through this very quickly there's an introduction by Drew Barrymore you know I've always loved E.T. I have no idea how much time I've seen it how many times I've seen it and um but it's one of those you know classic films that that i have seen many many times and you know it it, it just does not get you know there's, there's not a boring moment in it if you ask me i can watch this over and over again 
here's uh, Carlo Rim Carlo Rimbaldi who is the um, you know the creator of the ET uh, creature he uh, passed away recently um, earlier uh, a couple of months ago actually yeah it's a beautiful beautiful set and uh, the blue it looks wonderful absolutely And here's another Spielberg movie, War of the Worlds. This is uh, from Play.com, you know, the uh, Blu-ray Steelbook. Uh, very nice release. And um, I always like this film. This this is a great film. I just don't like the ending, though. Um, yeah, I thought the, the ending was was a letdown. Even though it has the... Um, the cameos of uh, Gene Barry and um, oh man, what's 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 the woman's name again? You know, they, they Gene Barry and, and and the woman they're they're the lead actors from the uh, George Pell Byron Haskin version from the 1950s. You know, they had these uh, you know guest appearances. They played Tom Cruise's uh, in-laws or ex-in-laws, I should I should say, but. Um, yeah, I think it's a great film. I love the sound effects. The sound effects are great. And, um, yeah, very good film. I really like this uh, steelbook as well. Uh, I picked up season 3 and season 4 of Breaking Bad. Uh, absolutely love the first two seasons. Uh, I got this from uh, Germany uh, for a very good price. They, they, they were both 30 euros. Um... Yeah, which is a great prize because I would have paid 40 euros for one season alone uh, in my own country. So um, I was actually waiting for uh, you know Amazon.de for the for the you know to drop the price. So when I saw it, when they you know when I saw that they dropped the price, I immediately got both of them because I joy I really enjoyed the first two very much and uh, the ending of season. Two was uh, fantastic, so I'm looking forward to uh, you know how the story continues in the third one and of course the fourth one as well. So um, yeah, looking forward to seeing those uh, in the upcoming month. Uh, the next three Blu-rays I got from uh, Screen Archives. Um, you know, the first one is uh, Night of the Living Dead, the Tom Savini version from the 19, 1990. Um, yeah, I've shown this one before in my um, uh, Zombie Collection Part 6. And uh, no need to say anything else about this one. Uh, another one that I picked up is Desiree. I've never heard, of, heard about this film. Um, it stars Marlon Brando as Napoleon. So it, it looks pretty good actually. I've only seen some clips of the Blu-ray and it looks very nice. Picture quality looks uh, fantastic. So it also stars uh, Gene Simmons who plays Desiree Clearly, the first and lasting love of um, Napoleon. Directed by Henry Coster, who also directed The Robe. With superb widescreen cinemato cinematography by Milton Krasner. Uh -huh. Well, I like these kind of epic, you know, historical movies. So, looking forward to seeing this one. And the third one I got is Enemy Mind, uh, which is a science fiction movie from the 1980s, uh, directed by Wolfgang Peterson, who also did um, uh, The Never Ending Story. Uh, Troy and um, the perfect storm and some other movies um, This is a great uh, science fiction movie. It does seem dated You know, especially when you're watching it on blu-ray But uh, I never have any problems with that. You know, it, it never really bothered me But um, the story is about uh, Dennis Quaid. He's played a fighter pilot who's you know he's fighting uh, this alien race. You can see um, one of them over here, played by Lewis Cossett Jr. And um, they both crash onto an unknown planet, 
and at first they you know they try to kill each other but um, then they have to you know in order to survive to have they have to help each other and it's a very good uh, very good film now story wise this movie um, has a lot of similarities with uh, this movie Hell in the Pacific with uh, Lee Marvin and Toshiro Mifune an excellent film as well which takes place in the um, you know World War two so this is kind of like the science fiction version of this one but um, yeah very very good film I've always enjoyed this one enemy mind and last but not least I have picked up the steelbook of Prometheus um, now there's some things I'd like to say about this but I'll keep it as short as possible because I don't want to bore you guys to death with it um, I'm a big fan of the alien movies especially the first two alien movies so I was very much looking forward to this one uh, I had high expectations and um, I saw the teaser trailer and I loved it and I you know didn't see or read anything else about Prometheus when there was an article in a magazine or when there was something on the internet I just ignored it uh, when there was something on television I just changed the channel you know I just didn't want to know anything about it um, I just you know, I thought you know the less I know the more surprised I would be and um, and then I saw you know, the reviews were coming, and I didn't read the reviews, but I did saw the um, the stars that the critics were giving, you know, one, two, five, and most of the critics gave it gave it uh, three stars. So that really lowered my expectations. But um, I, I I saw it in the theater in 3D, and. Um, I expected something completely different because I thought that this was going to be a direct prequel to the original Alien. You know, I, I actually thought that this ship was the same ship from from Alien, and I also thought that the the, the planet where Prometheus takes place on was the same planet from Alien as well. Even though I did notice from the teaser trailer that the planet was you know different than from Alien. But that was, you know, that is what I was expecting. So I was a little confused, and um, while I was watching the movie, and I also there were also some a lot of questions that I, I that I had in mind, and you know because of that I couldn't really concentrate on the movie itself. And um, on top of that, another thing that kind of ruined the movie for me was 3d now yeah I, I used to love watching movies in 3d but now I'm disliking it more and more um, I constantly had the urge to um, you know take the 3d glasses off because they were very annoying and um, the glasses itself were too dark you know I couldn't see much of it so it wasn't the most pleasant 3d you know cinema experience that I had but um, anyway I, I I've seen it the second time on blu-ray um, you know really concentrated on the movie and on the story itself and I, I liked it I, I, I liked it much better than the first time obviously and I, I think it's a good film I really does I really do think so it, it isn't as bad as some people say it is but there is a much better movie in here somewhere if Ridley Scott has hired a better writer um, you know it could have been much better obviously uh, I think the first writer um, you know there were two writers involved the first writer uh, he wrote you know the original draft that he wrote uh, contains you know the alien uh, the xenomorph alien and it also has um, the face huggers in the film as well or in the script as well and you're kind of you know wondering what that would have been like if uh, that was in Prometheus but I think 
Uh, Ridley Scott didn't want to go there because it was you know done many times before, and I, I think he wanted to do something different, you know, something new. And so he hired another writer, which is Damon Lindelof, and uh, I don't think that was a wise choice because the script obviously is the weakest part of the whole movie, really. And um, yeah, it, it's it's definitely not a bad film. It's a good film. Uh, some of the um, some of the actors are are okay. I mean, I mean Naomi Rapage, who plays um, Elizabeth Shaw. Uh, I think she was very good. Uh, Michael Fassbender, of course, he easily steals the show as David the Android. And there, there are some great moments in the film. Uh, the the um, the Mad Pot sequence was great. Um, yeah, there's some great moments. I, you know, I'm I'm actually hoping that there's going to be a director's cut. I don't think so, but. Um, you know, this this edition contains deleted scenes, and the deleted scenes, they're nice to watch, but they're not really that special. But I'm hoping that Ridley Scott also cut out some other scenes that aren't on this on this Blu-ray set. Uh, you know that he was maybe that he might prepare for the director's cut, but I, I don't know, I don't think so. But um, but anyway, I think it's a good film. I don't think it's a great film. It It's definitely not a science fiction classic as the original Alien and Blade Runner. Um, it is not now and it will not be in 20, 30 years time. Uh, it's just a good film uh, with some very great moments in it. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to the sequel. It had an open ending. So I'm very curious how the story will, you know, continues. Um, they they say that this is the first movie of a trilogy. So um, yeah, I'd like to know how the story goes on from here. Anyway, that's just my opinion on Prometheus. And that is it for my Blu-ray update of October 2012. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.